Technology Hellas uh, through the uh, Information Technology Institute under the lead of Dr. Ioannis Kovacias and Dr. Spiros Mikolopoulos. Uh, today I'm going to present to you the ECOS. ECOS project is an interdisciplinary approach combining researchers from various fields, like computer scientists from CERT ITI, archaeologists from the effort of antiquities of Thessaloniki City, anthropologists from the Democritus University of Thrace, as well as SMEs from the tourist sector like Dot to Dot and Tetraton. The aim of the project is to provide the history of Thessaloniki City through a key factor of social expression, the biographies of its inhabitants. At first, we have to understand that the whole games and Hellenic field is not new, as it could be traced back to the work of Plato, who stated that play can be utilized to guide the development of the child while also serving educational purposes. Plato didn't know that at the time, but he provided the fundamentals of the serious game and archaic game fields we are discussing about nowadays. So, ECO's focal point is to provide an innovative way of disseminating archaeological and anthropological research results through the visualization and gamification of historical content and context. Initiatives like this form a bridge between the present and the past while providing the interactive ways for people to engage with artifacts and the people who lived before them while learning their history. Now, uh, let me take you back to the beginning when we were grasping the idea of this project. It all started when the construction of the Metropolitan Railway in Thessaloniki brought to light relics of the city's Hellenistic, Roman, Byzantine and Ottoman periods, as well as more than 4,500 human burials. This led to the basic questions we had to answer before proceeding further in the development phase. How do we preserve the memory of ancient populations? And how do we introduce ancient citizens to modern societies? The answer was given to us by the 3D graphics and extended reality fields, which provide a suitable way of engaging with modern societies. The methodology of ECOS consists of five steps. At the first step, we selected the cultural context we were going to provide to the users from the archaeological excavations. At the next step, we conducted audience research to provide insights regarding the user's perception of the technology we were going to use. At the next step, an anthropological study took place to gain valuable information regarding the people we were going to present in our game. Before the final development of the applications, the scenarios regarding the human biographies and aspects of everyday life in ancient Thessaloniki had to be written. All of this led to the final and crucial step in the methodology the development of the XR environments for our storytelling. As I explained before, the first step was the selection of the archaeological material we were going to present. Right now, I've selected three cases to explain the way we decided to digitize those cases and transfer them into the XR environments. As you can see, the burial chamber originally uh, consisted of a set of two graves and then, at the turn of the century, other people built a set of two graves on top of this, resulting in the destruction of the initial chamber. So the user will be able to witness two phases of the burial chamber. The original phase with the set of the two graves and the destructed phase with the other graves on top of that. In the middle photo, uh, you can see an amphora from the second century, which due to the very nature of the artifact, had to be digitized using the photogrammetry technique. At the last picture, there's a doll uh, we found made of bone, originated from Italy, that uh, we will develop from scratch because it was too fragile to be taken out of its box to conduct photogrammetry. At the next step, in order to define the user needs and preferences regarding the VR and AR applications, a questionnaire was distributed to three main groups of people, citizens of the Saloniki, uh, was decided to 188 answers, tourists of Thessaloniki, 103 answers, uh, and educators of the city, 98 answers. The questionnaire contains several generic questions regarding the level of familiarization with the EXA technologies and the information that will be communicated within the game. In addition, the thematic axis of the archaeological and anthropological information was derived from the answers to the question. While analyzing the results, 
It was clearly observed that nearly half of the respondents, 55%, were not familiar with these technologies and has, had uh, used them. But the most encouraging fact is that they are willing to attempt to become familiar with those technologies and that they are, in general, interested in games for cultural heritage. Moreover, the majority of the respondents wanted to correlate the biographies with the cultural context while interacting with digitized objects. As for the duration of the game, uh, it seems like 15 minutes uh, was the average amount of time that the 40% of the people wanted to spend within the virtual environment. As for the XR historical environments, in the VR experiences, the players meet the ancient inhabitants in the form of avatars and interact with cultural assets in gamified mode. The air environments focus on experiential tours of the city points of interest that embed interactive AR projections of cultural assets. Now, before the production phase, it was of major importance to develop the scenarios and the reward system for the series game. At first, the purpose of the AR environment is to introduce a different approach by which users can perceive the city. On the first screen, a map of the historical center with predefined points of interest will appear. Afterwards, the user will be able to choose between those locations in order to augment the projection of 3D cultural assets that once existed in this place, like the photographic result in the right photo. Combined with information regarding the specific assets and short animations. Regarding the VR experiences, uh, the application will be divided into six unique environments. Uh, at the first virtual environment, the user will be witnessing the internal parts of the Saloniki subway, and this is the place in which the defining goal of the game will be presented to the player. Then, on the inside of the wagon from the subway, uh, the first acquaintance with the ancient cities of the city will be achieved. The subway passengers' forms will initially appear blurred, with the goal being to learn about their stories and unblur their forms. Moreover, each passenger will introduce to the player his own VR environment related to his biography. So, the first environment is a port from the 3rd century, where the users will learn about the multicultural nature of the Saloniki. The next environment is a scripter's office, where the player could acquire knowledge related to the professions in Rome of Thessaloniki. As I explained before, a particularly intriguing VR environment is the burial chamber. This environment could be created using the architectural designs provided by the, the archaeologists and would serve as the focal point for the storytelling of two main thematic axes, the reuse of graves and the ancient burial practices. First, the user will be placed at the entrance of the structure and some generic information will be presented to him. As the player moves and explores further, the facts about the past will become more specific and targeted. The next environment is a child's uh, room from the second century, where we will discuss the breastfeeding a child in the Roman Thessaloniki. Uh, the last environment will be a 3D reconstruction of the dining room of a Byzantine house, a so-called Tukrinium. There, the user will acquire information regarding the food preferences and the nutrition during the Byzantine period. Additionally, before the closure of the narration related to each virtual experience, a reward in the form of information will be presented to the player. When the learning goal is achieved, the user will unblur the avatar, like the blurred form on the left picture, and be rewarded with the phenotypic characteristics of the ancient citizen who had visually transported him to the specific environment. As a result, the player will be informed about the ancient citizen's eye, hair, and skin color, and other anthropological findings. Moreover, in certain environments, the user will have the unique chance to play ancient games with the residents. Throughout the development, which is currently what we do in the project, Four key objectives were taken into account in order to design the series game. At first, the interaction within the game, the immersion level, uh, the user participation, and of course, the photorealism of the environment. Regarding the tools for the development, the AR application for Android devices will be created using the Unity game engine and the AR, AR core platform. 
while for iOS devices, ARKit will be combined with the Unity game engine. The VR environments will be designed using Unity 3D. Also, the user will extract the desired information from these objects that will be digitized using 3D modeling tools like Cinema 4D to recreate decay findings or the photographic technique for intact preserved objects. Uh, to conclude, nowadays it seems like the visual worlds are getting closer to us by the day, thanks to the use of cutting edge technologies and hardware. Also, individuals are allowed to learn, communicate and act, while also becoming present in digital and digitally enhanced physical environments. Thus, the methodology could be adopted by researchers who are searching for a way to communicate their research outcomes to a wider audience through archive gaming technology. Finally, due to the fact that the project is currently at the development, the most crucial part is, of course, the implementation of the methodology and the evaluation of the learning outcome by the users. I would like to thank you all once again.